Hello, my name is Lucas Parent. Welcome back to my podcast. Let's get right into it. A rivalry was renewed in the NBA last season as the two most prolific franchises of all time squared off. The Celtics faced off against the Los Angeles Lakers in Los Angeles as part of their West Coast road trip. The Celtics got out to a lead as large as 20, but struggled to keep it as the Lakers rallied back to even the game in the final minutes. Anthony Davis of the Lakers missed two clutch free throws in the final minute to give the Celtics an opportunity to tie the game at 110. Jason Tatum delivered, hitting a two-pointer and effectively sending the game into overtime. The Lakers struck first in overtime, but the Celtics were able to hold them off, winning the game by a score of 122-118. to Jason Tatum scored 44 points in the victory and contributed to five of the Celtics' 19 threes. Jalen Brown added 25 points and 15 rebounds, and Marcus Smart added 18 points and 6 assists as the Celtics rolled to victory number 21 in 28 games to start the season. LeBron James of the Lakers continued his climb up the all-time scoring mountain with a near triple-double, 33 points, 9 rebounds, and 9 assists. Anthony Davis continued his MVP level of play as he contributed 37 points and 12 rebounds in the Laker loss. Robert Williams' return is now considered imminent, as he was recently cleared by team doctors to play. Williams averaged 10 points and nearly 10 rebounds for the runner-up Celtics last season. The Bruins were in action last night as well, defeating the New York Islanders 4-3. Jake DeBrusque scored two of four Bruin goals. The Bruins were able to capture the win in the shootout, winning 2-1. In other NHL news, Alex Ovechkin recorded a hat trick last night for goals numbers 798, 799, and 800 in his incredible NHL career. Ovechkin is now one goal away from tying Gordie Howe for second most all-time. What's incredible about the feat is it took Gordie Howe 1,767 games to score his 800 first goal. Ovechkin has achieved the feat in over 450 less games. The Patriots visited the Cardinals on Monday Night Football this week in a game which was pretty much a toss-up from the start. However, an unfortunate turn of events saw Cardinals quarterback Kyler Murray leave the game with a non-contact injury. It was later determined that Murray suffered a torn ACL which would effectively end his season. Here's to wishing Murray a speedy recovery and hoping he returns back stronger next season. New England was able to take advantage of poor play by Cardinals backup Colt McCoy and erase a three-point deficit at halftime to win 27-13. The Patriots' offense was supplemented by a solid running attack, which did not feature injured running back Damian Harris. Relative unknowns Pierre Strong Jr. and Kevin Harris combined for over 90 rushing yards and a pair of touchdowns. The Pats are now 7-6 with four games to play and are right in the thick of the playoff race in the AFC. The Patriots visit the Los Angeles Raiders this week, a team which has been struggling under new head coach Josh McDaniels. McDaniels previously served in a coordinator role for the Patriots. The World Cup is down to three teams and a champion is soon to be crowned. Argentina defeated Croatia 3-0 behind a Herculean performance from Lionel Messi. Julian Alvarez scored two goals as Argentina rolled into the finals. Argentina will now sit back and await their next challenger as they will face the winner of France against Morocco today at 2 p.m. Oakland Athletics catcher Sean Murphy was dealt to the Braves on Monday in a three-team trade which sent several pitchers and William Contreras elsewhere. Pitcher Chris Bassett agreed to a three-year contract with the Toronto Blue Jays on Monday as well. In larger news, the Giants have agreed to terms with star shortstop Carlos Correa on a 13-year, $350 million contract. Correa played a fundamental role in the Astros' championship run last season and now finds a new home in San Francisco. I would like to offer a special shout-out today to my uncle, Steve Pertuso. Steve is best known for his role on the Pawtucket Championship squad in the 1966 Little League World Series. Steve was a consummate professional while being only a Little Leaguer at the time. As well as being a star on the diamond, Steve's positive attitude towards life has never shifted in the face of adversity. Today, our hats are off to you. Thank you everyone for listening, and we will be back on Friday to wrap up the week.